Hello, this is Ryan of Tanadrine Studios, and in this video I would like to share and demonstrate a workflow concept um, for people who are looking to get the most out of facial tracking using uh, Nevron and a Kinect uh, camera. Um, now, the Kinect is a limited piece of hardware in terms of 3D production. Okay, it's not going to compare to uh, a $2,500 plus solution that is specifically designed for facial tracking that requires you to wear markers and use uh, higher resolution cameras. But just because the Kinect is a budget solution doesn't mean you have to settle for budget results. If you're willing to think outside the box, you can actually push this hardware quite far. So I have this emissary rig, uh, face mocap face rig um, set up. And let's enable faces and see what it does. All right, so I can, I can, let's see what we can do with the face uh, out of the box. All right, and I'm gonna set this to default. All right, so I can tilt my head. All right, I can move it up and down, side to side. Okay. And uh, let's see, I can open my mouth. I can curl my upper lip. Uh, upward. Yes, I can actually track that. And I can move my brows up and down. Now, I don't believe uh, out of the box you can get one-sided facial expressions. That's, that's, uh, I'm not quite sure on whether the Kinect is actually capable of doing that. Um, I haven't been able to get clear search results on that topic. So, that's pretty much the brunt of what you can do. Now, you might notice that the the Kinect isn't tracking my facial movements very well. Okay, Even if I set this to unfiltered, which is the fastest setting, okay, you can see that I have to do really exaggerated expressions to get it to work reliably. And even then it has some, some errors that uh, you know, it's it's just not tracking my face very well. This is because the Kinect isn't really designed well for real-time facial tracking. So why not give it more time to track your face so that it can give you more accurate results? Okay, so I have this simplified face setup, okay, and I got the head moving, but we actually don't want the head moving around while we're trying to calibrate the character's face. Uh, the problem with facial tracking out of the box is that you need to calibrate it to your face or else it's either going to be too sensitive or it's not going to be sensitive enough. Um, so one of the ways to do this, and there are many ways to achieve this, is to use booster link and, and, uh, and microscale hold nulls. So what I'm going to do here is open up the graph and go, okay, um, I want my mouth... When, when, when my mouth is closed, okay, now I'm going to do it when my mouth is open. And the key thing here is that you're comfortable speaking when you when you finish the calibration. You shouldn't have to do extreme facial expressions to get your character's lips moving. Okay, that's that's the whole point of, of doing this, doing it this way, so that it's easier to make sure that it works for you. Okay, and the exact same thing can be done with the um, with the O sound because. Uh, at bare minimum, you need two morphs in order to move a character's mouth. Okay, you need the ah and you need the o. Oh. So let's move the o oh of this character. Okay, looks like he's already at straight, so. Okay, and there we go. We have a usable facial tracking setup. 
Okay. And there you go. Okay. Now, the thing about facial tracking is that it doesn't work well in real time, as I said. Okay, it's not going to be the most accurate in real time. So let's move on to uh, the concept of slowing down the audio clip so that we can get better results. I'm actually going to switch back to the emissary rig since it's it's a more complete setup than what I have here. Okay, let's see about getting some actual usable results out of the Kinect facial tracking. Uh, in this case, I'm going to focus on just lip syncing uh, because the, the brows of the alien rig aren't really calibrated well to my face. Um, but there's two things that you need to keep note of as you do this. Uh, one is that you don't want to turn your head while you're doing the recording. Here's why. Okay, I wasn't even moving my mouth and yet it was affecting the face tracking. So keep your head still. All right, secondly, you wanna be looking directly at the camera while you're doing your recording, okay? A lot of people have their cameras set above their monitors or, or uh, some other location and it's it can be easy to tilt your head down a little bit to look at the look at what's happening on the computer screen uh, but you need to keep your head up and pointed directly at the camera to get the best results all right so uh, let's do this first I'm gonna record a take uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a recording from Space Quest 4's narrator so let's get that done Hey, keep your hands off yourself. This is a family game. Now, uh, I'm using Reaper to do this, but you can use any audio editing software to achieve this. Um, I recommend Audacity as a free solution. And with this clip, I'm going to reduce the playback rate to one third of its original. All right, this is going to give the Kinect a lot more time to process my facial expressions. Um, so that I can get more accurate results. And what we're going to do here is render out the track. I'm going to call it Face Track Slow. And let's throw that into Lightwave. All right. Now let's take a listen to this clip. I'll probably sound like a stoner. Hey, keep your yeah, hands man. off I'm so yourself. Mellow. I'm so this mellow, man. Is a Family game. Oh, geez. All right. Now, when you're doing recordings, you always want to start with a fresh... Uh, you want to record on a fresh take um, with no previously existing animation because it, it's not going to completely overwrite. Um, so always make sure that you're working on a fresh take or a new one uh, before doing your recordings. All right, so let's let's do this. Hey, keep your hands off yourself. This is a family game. And we can stop recording and allow play to see how our results look. Okay, somewhat decent. And now here's where here's where uh, we need to do the adjustment to get the facial track working at real time again. First, we need to undo our manipulations here. I'll go okay, face track normal. And with the character object selected, or or whatever items uh, contain the uh, virtual studio uh, properties on them. What we're going to do is we're going to scale. These are keyframes that got created while we while we were doing our recording. So, what we this is three times longer than what the clip normally played at. So we need to divide this by three. So what we're going to do here is go scale keys, numeric scale. I'm going to we're going to use 0 0.33. All right, now. We're going to switch the audio clip so that it's playing back at normal speed again. All right, load audio, face track normal. 
All right, and let's let's close in on here and see how this looks. Off yourself. This is a family game. Hey, keep your hands off yourself. This is a family game. And it's much more it it's much more accurate, okay? This is actually these the results I would dare say are are quite usable. Now, one thing that you might want to do after the fact is that you're going to end up with fractional keyframes after doing this. Um, this can make the animation feel like really choppy or uh, it can just make things not look quite right. So what you actually want to do is reduce the amount of detail that is showing in this animation. All right, so we're going to set this to half of its original frames per second, which was 30. And I'll select all the channels. And what we can do here is go um, snap keys to frames. What this will do is it'll eliminate all the fractional frames. And this is also a way if you reduce the frame rate and then run this command, you are basically chopping the amount of keyframes in half without without having to um, run any like keyframe filters or anything like that. Okay, so I'll set this back to 30. Now let's see how this looks. This will... Hey, keep your hands off yourself. This is a family game. Right. And there we go. So that's basically the, the workflow that I use to, to get my character's mouths moving uh, fairly decently without the benefit of super expensive um, facial tracking software. Okay, It's usable, it isn't the best, but it gets the job done. And really, at the end of the day, that's all that matters.